Hey everybody! Today's practice problem comes from Principles of Microeconomics by Dirk Mateer and Lee Kopik. We're going to be doing Chapter 9, Problem Number 10. The problem reads as follows. Barney's Snow Removal Service is a profit-maximizing competitive firm. Or we can think about sometimes when we say competitive firm, what that really means is that it's a firm in a competitive market. Barney clears driveways for $10 each. His total cost each day is $250, and half of his total costs are fixed. If Barney clears 20 driveways a day, should he continue to operate or shut down? And then it follows on to ask a question about the long run as well. So let's think about how to organize the information that we have. First of all, this assumption of a competitive market just means that Barney is a small player in a market with a lot of similar firms and that he's taking the market price as given, and that he can sell as much output as he wants at that market price. It says, Barney clears driveways for $10 each. So if he's profit maximizing, it must be the case that the market price for clearing driveways is $10. Because in a competitive market, if he's just taking the market price as given, he wouldn't be able to clear any driveways if he charged more than $10. But since he can clear as many as he wants at a price of $10, he has no incentive to charge less than $10 or charge less than the market price, right? So the market price must be $10. So says his total cost each day is $250. So his total cost is $250. We don't know what his quantity is just yet. It says in half of his total costs are fixed. So we could say that his total fixed cost is just 250 divided by 2, or 125. This would also, of course, imply that his total variable cost is also 125, because total cost is just the sum of total fixed cost and total variable cost. It says, if Barney clears 20 driveways a day, so now we know that his profit maximizing quantity is 20. And the problem says, should he continue to operate or shut down? So what we're doing is really we have an instance of the shutdown condition. And we came up with a situation where you know, we had a rule comparing price and average variable cost, et cetera, et cetera. But let's think about where that rule came from. And we can use that directly to answer the question here, and we can also get some intuition from doing so. Because if we're going to think about whether Barney should produce or shut down, at least in the short run, we could compare those situations. We could say, well, what happens if he shuts down? And also, what happens if he produces, right? So if he shuts down, well, you know, it's universally true that profit, which I've represented as pi here, is equal to total revenue minus total cost. But if he's shut down, he's not producing any output. If he's not producing any output, he's not getting any revenue. So if he's going to shut down, total revenue is zero. But his total cost in the short run isn't actually zero. And that's a really important thing to keep in mind. Because the whole idea of the short run is you've already decided to be in a business. You've paid your fixed cost, and that fixed cost is not recoverable. It's what's called a sunk cost. So Barney, in this case, he could choose to shut down and put his snowplow away, but he's not going to get back this $125 fixed cost. So in fact, his total cost at a production quantity of zero is going to be $125. And his profit from shutting down is going to be negative $125. If he produces, on the other hand, we can do the same analysis, but now taking into account the fact that he's actually producing. And we were, in fact, told how much he's producing if he chooses to do so. So now. Again, profit is equal to total revenue minus total cost. 
So now total revenue is just price times quantity, right? So price of $10 times a quantity of 20, just put that in, I'll put it in as 10 times 20 for now, minus his total cost. So his total cost, we were told, was 250. So we're gonna have to subtract out 250 and we get $200 minus $250 or a profit, an economic profit of negative $50. So upon first glance, this looks bad, right? Profit is negative $50, ooh, let's not do that. However, in the short run, we don't have an option of getting to a profit equals zero point. So what we're really comparing is would you rather produce and get negative 50 or shut down and get negative 125? I don't know about you, but I would rather produce and get my negative 50 because then at least I've gone part of the way to paying back this $125 fixed cost. Whereas here, I've got to figure out how to come up with that in a way that doesn't involve producing what I'm currently supposed to be producing, right? Now, you can also notice that we have a shutdown condition that says we want to shut down if the price we're receiving is less than our average variable cost, you know, implicitly at the profit maximizing quantity. And notice sometimes that this profit maximizing quantity might actually be the loss minimizing quantity if positive profits are not possible. We can think about how to apply this formula directly as well. Though we can say here, because we were told that Barney was profit maximizing, it must be the case that his profit maximizing quantity at a price of $10 is 20. So we could go through and we could calculate an average variable cost. An average variable cost is just going to be total variable cost divided by quantity. So this would just be 125 divided by 20, which is, if I'm doing my math correctly, 125 divided by 10 would be 12 and a half. So this is going to be $6.25. So we can now use this formula directly and we can say, well, Barney would want to shut down if his price of $10 were less than his average variable cost at the profit maximizing quantity, which we calculated to be 625. $10 is not less than 625. So again, we've seen now directly using our rule that Barney would not want to shut down in the short run. The second thing that this question asks is if this situation persists, meaning if this price and cost structure persists, will Barney stay in the industry or exit? So when we're talking about staying in the industry or exiting, we're talking about a long run phenomenon, right? Where Barney actually has the opportunity to stop paying this fixed cost and can actually get back to a total cost of zero and an economic profit of zero by exiting. So we can see here, just based on our numbers, if the best that Barney can do in the short run is to get an economic profit of negative $50, then yeah, when, the, when he's thinking about a longer planning horizon and has the opportunity to exit the industry, he would exit the industry because this economic profit of negative $50 means he could do $50 better going somewhere else. So in the long run, when he has that opportunity, he'll go somewhere else. And he won't just keep incurring this cost here we can also say, we can have a rule for exiting. We can say in the long run that a company is going to want to exit if the market price is not less than average variable cost, but is less than average total cost. Again, implicitly at the profit maximizing quantity. So we can see here 
we can calculate that as well. And we could say average total cost is just a total cost of 250 divided by a quantity of 20. So our average total cost is going to be $12.50. And we can then check it against here. We want to exit if the price we're receiving of $10 is less than the average total cost of $12.50. Oh, hey, yeah, that is true. So in fact, we do want to exit. And this rule is exactly equivalent to saying that a firm will want to exit if it's making zero economic profit, or less than zero economic profit, rather, which is exactly what we see here.